Good morning. It's December 9th, and this is the mop up. Happy December 9th, or as Sean Spicer calls it, two days after the anniversary of D Day. Sean Spicer, remember him? He was President Trump's first press secretary. Now he has a show on OWN or Newsmax. And on December 7th, a day that will live in infamy, Sean Spicer tweeted, Today is D-Day. It only lives in infamy if we remember and share the story of sacrifice with the next generation. Hashtag D-Day. Sean Spicer, right? And he's he was in the Navy, right? Today is D-Day. It only lives in infamy. That was what... Uh, Roosevelt, the word infamy he used to describe Pearl Harbor. D-Day was not infamy. Uh, that's former White House uh, press secretary for Donald Trump, uh, <laughs> Sean Spicer. I don't know. Maybe that's what the people who were rooting for the Japanese called Pearl Harbor. Maybe they, they called it D-Day. Who, who knows with these Republicans? Maybe <laughs> Pearl, the attack on Pearl Harbor was D-Day. I don't know. Brittany Griner, the WNBA star, was just traded for Victor Bout, a Russian arms dealer. Plus, there's a signing bonus, so there's that. Uh, Griner spent 10 months behind bars in Russia after she was arrested inside Moscow airport for carrying vape cartridges with hash oil inside of them. Victor Bout is nicknamed the Merchant of Death and was serving 25 years after a jury in New York found him guilty in 2011 of conspiring to sell weapons to Colombian rebels. Nicolas Cage played him in the movie Lord of War, so you could say he's already paid his debt to society. Although he denies it, Victor Bout is supposedly linked to Russia's intelligence services. Meanwhile, with Vladimir Putin conscripting an additional 300,000 Russians to fight in Ukraine, the Russian president took to the airwaves on Wednesday to tell his people that as the war in Ukraine enters its 10th month, there is no sign of it ending anytime soon. Ukraine has used drones to push into Russia attacking several military bases over the border. Winter is about to set in, with fighting expected to be less intense during the cold weather. Also this week, Putin signed into law a bill preventing anyone from speaking positively about same-sex relationships. The new law prevents any and all pro-LGBTQ propaganda prevents any propaganda, any displays of non-traditional relationships in movies, television, writing, and advertising. Alexander Kinstein, who wrote the bill, said, quote, a special military operation is taking place, not only on the battlefields, but also in the consciousness of the people, in their minds and in their souls. Today, we are fighting so that in Russia, instead of Mom and dad, there isn't parent number one, parent number two, parent number three. Pretty, pretty predictable. Pretty predictable. Speaking of which, Brittany Griner has a wife. Her name is Sherelle Griner. She was invited to the Oval Office yesterday to celebrate Brittany Griner's return to America. Here is Sherelle Griner. Thank you, everybody, for your support. Um, and today is just a happy day for me and my family. So um, I'm going to smile right now. <laughs> um, thank you. Meanwhile, here in America, after shuttling between both houses, the Respect for Marriage Act was passed once again by the House, and it now makes its way to President Biden's desk for his signature. Here is Nancy Pelosi, who represents the city of San Francisco. On this vote, the yeas are 258, the nays are 169, present one. The motion is adopted.
was emotional. I'm sorry. I don't know if you heard her say, I got a little emotional. I'm sorry. Maybe her greatest accomplishment as speaker? Maybe. Speaker Pelosi got a little emotional. So did Vicki Hartzler. She's a congresswoman. Before the vote was taken, she kind of got teary-eyed. Vicki is a Republican. She represents Missouri. And as I said, just like Speaker Pelosi, Congressman Hartzler could hardly contain herself. Mr. Speaker, I'll tell you my priority. Protect religious liberty protect people of faith, and protect Americans who believe in the true meaning of marriage. I hope and pray that my colleagues will find the courage to join me in opposing this misguided and this dangerous bill. And I yield back. <laughs> the subtext, of course, is that Congresswoman Vicki Hartzler just found out her husband is sleeping with her sister. We get so emotional, don't we? Uh, I wonder if Congresswoman Vicki Hartzler, uh, who opposes same-sex marriage, uh, gets emotional when a member of the LGBTQ community is beaten to death. She just doesn't oppose same-sex marriage. She's against civil unions, domestic partnerships. She voted against banning discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity. She's a pig. Uh, she's against transgender soldiers serving in the military. Hartzler, Congresswoman Hartzler, also supports gay conversion and held an event inside her office, her congressional office, to celebrate organizations that convert gay people. She's a pig. Congressman Ted Lieu's office is right next door to Vicki Hartzler's office, and he complained about this event celebrating uh, gay conversion. If you remember, Congressman Lou was on my show back when he introduced a bill outlawing gay conversion therapy in California. Gay conversion therapy has been pretty much outlawed in California thanks to Congressman Ted Lieu. Earlier this year... Hartzler's Twitter account was suspended after she attacked transgender swimmer Leah Thomas by tweeting, women's sports are for women, not men pretending to be women. Did I mention that, that she's a pig? Did I mention that? Elon Musk uh, will have no problem with her being back on Twitter. Uh, Musk has a transgender daughter who hates him. When his transgender daughter turned 18 this year, she legally filed to no longer be related to Elon Musk. Musk has put out several tweets making fun of people's pronouns. But in an interview with the Financial Times this year, Musk cited neo-Marxists as the reason his daughter hates him. Vicki Hartzell, Congresswoman Vicki Hartzell, pig. This is a pig. So she cried. She cried because same-sex marriage is now legal in America. Did she cry like that when the Pulse nightclub was shot up in Orlando or when Club Q in Colorado Springs was shot up? To refresh your memory, and here is... The big difference between Democrats and Republicans. This is the difference. Last month, Club Q in Colorado Springs was shot up on drag night. Some assassin came in, killed five, injuring dozens. President Biden immediately called for an assault weapons ban, and Schumer and Pelosi fast tracked the Respect for Marriage Act. And Republicans are against both. They're against banning guns, and they're also against the Respect for Marriage Act. Although 39 Republicans in the House, 12 in the Senate, joined all the Democrats in favor of the Respect for Marriage Act. Prominent gay Republicans and donors reportedly worked behind the scenes to get this bill passed. One of those uh, Republicans uh, was uh, outgoing Ohio Republican Senator Rob Portman, whose son is gay, as well as Ken Melman, former chairman of the Republican National Committee. Ken Melman, who came out of the closet back in 2010, six years too late. 
He was in charge of the... Uh, Bellman lobbied for the Respect for Marriage Act. So he didn't quite redeem himself, but he finally did something good. He, uh, he came out in 2010, but uh, back in 2004, when he was chairman of the GOP, uh, he, Karl Rove, and George W. Bush staged the most homophobic presidential campaign in American history. For those of you who don't remember, uh, Rove, Melman, and George W. Bush and Dick Cheney needed conservatives to come out and vote for Bush's reelection. But conservatives were unhappy. They were appalled with how Bush's war in Iraq was going. So to get conservatives to the polls, Rove, Carl Rove, and Ken Melman, who was in the closet at the time, they convinced several swing states to put same-sex marriage on the ballot. They figured the conservatives would vote against the homosexuals. They would come out to vote against the homosexuals. And while they were already in the voting booth, they would stick around and cast a ballot for George W. Bush. And it worked. George W. Bush got reelected, and the lives of hundreds of thousands of LGBTQ Americans were ruined. They were ruined. And the suicides, thanks to the political machinations of the closeted Ken Melman. They did it. They turned on the gays in 2004, America had invaded Iraq in 2003, and it was a disaster. It works. You get reelected when you turn on the homosexuals. It works because when you're losing an immoral war, you change the subject. When conservatives are losing a war, they distract by attacking the LGBTQ. We're seeing it right now in Russia, right? Putin is failing miserably in Ukraine. He needs a scapegoat someone to blame. So, like George W. Bush, blame the gays. Melman, Rove, and Bush needed someone to blame. Back in 2004, America's manhood was at stake. Men, real men, Republicans, no doubt, from Texas. They don't lose wars. Why is our masculinity in jeopardy? Well, it can't be because, it can't be because our leaders got us into a pitiless war. It's the homosexuals. They want to marry. They want to strip us of our manhood. Things never change. When in doubt, blame the gays. Well, the Respect for Marriage Act passed. It did pass. And it's going to get codified into law. President Biden is going to sign it. It passed, but not before conservatives, conservative Republicans like Congressman Jim Jordan put up a fight. Congressman Jim Jordan is probably going to be the next chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, so get used to him. He said the Respect for Marriage Act is, quote, the wrong way to go. He voted against it yesterday. In 2015, Jim Jordan introduced legislation to pass a constitutional amendment banning same-sex marriage. He really hates same-sex marriage. He's uptight when it comes to homosexuals because he was the assistant wrestling coach at Ohio State University from 1987 until 1995. And during that period, the wrestling team's physician, Dr. Richard Strauss, was accused of sexually assaulting 177 young men on the team. Dr. Strauss, when the investigation began, committed suicide. Four years ago, at least eight former wrestlers on the team said Jim Jordan, Congressman Jim Jordan, knew about the sexual abuse, but did nothing to stop it. Congressman Jim Jordan's locker was right next to Dr. Strauss's, and Jim Jordan has refused to cooperate with the investigation. It's an ongoing investigation. The Cleveland Plain Dealer published an editorial four years ago asking Jim Jordan to finally tell what he knew. Meanwhile, several lawsuits are pending against Congressman Jim Jordan, one of which accuses Jordan of witness tampering. This is going to be the new chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. During the debate on the Respect for Marriage Act yesterday, 
Democrats brought up the killing at the gay nightclub in Colorado Springs last month. And to his credit, Jim Jordan condemned the shooting. Uh, what happened in Colorado, as the gentleman referenced, um, was wrong. As wrong as wrong could be. We all understand that. Thank you. You know, maybe we can't agree on same-sex marriage, but even Jim Jordan and I can agree that shooting up a gay bar, killing five people, injuring dozens on drag night is a bad thing. Oh, wait, Jim Jordan wants to add something? But you know what else is wrong? Hmm, what else is wrong? Hmm, uh, being an assistant wrestling coach, but not knowing the team doctor molested 177 of the men you're coaching, is that, that would be wrong? Expecting anyone to believe that a, not a single one of those 177 wrestlers came to you and said, Dr. Strauss, just try to give me a hand job in the sauna. That, that would be pretty wrong. Or even worse, Jim Jordan, being an assistant wrestling coach and not knowing that 177 guys on your team had been molested by the team doctor, not knowing what kind of coach, what kind of leader, what kind of future government official, what kind of future chairman of the House Judiciary Committee uh, could not know that the 177 wrestlers he was supposed to be taken care of were molested by the team physician, Jim Jordan. It is worse that you don't know. So you ask what else is wrong? I'm going to say that several of those things are wrong too, but you tell me what else is wrong. You said shooting up a gay nightclub is wrong. And then you said, you know what else is wrong? What else is wrong? The 100 churches and crisis pregnancy centers that were attacked in the aftermath of the Dobbs decision. Actually, when the leak happened, dozens and dozens of those attacks happened between the leak of the opinion and the opinion itself, all designed to intimidate the Supreme Court. This is a man who lies. He is an immoral practitioner, not even of false equivalencies. This is just a lie. Uh, yes, there have been, since the Dobbs decision, a, uh, some, uh, some vandalism, some vandalism at uh, some churches and uh, pregnancy centers that uh, advise people to not get an abortion. Uh, but nobody has shot up a church, Jim Jordan. Some windows were broken. There's been some graffiti. There are some websites that keep track of these attacks on churches and crisis pregnancy centers. And crisis pregnancy centers are uh, run by religious organizations, and they counsel women, sometimes under false premises, uh, against getting an abortion. And so they've been spray painted by pro-choice activists. Uh, some windows have been broken. Uh, that is in no way like somebody shooting up a gay bar, killing five and injuring dozens. Uh, yes, some, some churches and pregnancy centers were vandalized. It's wrong. Not even close. It's not the same thing. Un, uh, unlike these uh, churches and, uh, and, and uh, pregnancy centers... Uh, abortion clinics get firebombed. Abortion doctors get assassinated. According to Forbes, most crimes against abortion providers increased last year. Uh, stalking of abortion doctors, stalking of nurses, the practitioners, increased by 600% in one year. Blockades barring access to the abortion clinics, up 500%. Suspicious packages being sent to abortion clinics, up 163%. People invading abortion facilities and screaming and threatening, up 129%. This is from Forbes. Assault and battery of abortion doctors and nurses, up 128%. 
Since abortion was legalized in the 1970s, the National Abortion Federation has been keeping track of the attacks on clinics, doctors, abortion providers, and nurses. Since 1977, there have been 11 murders of abortion doctors. There have been 42 bombings, 196 arson attacks, and 491 assaults, physical assaults, on nurses and doctors. This is not even close to bring up the 100 churches and pregnancy centers that got graffitied after the Dobbs decision is malicious. Well, the argument went back to the Judiciary Committee, where Congressman Ted Lieu took exception, took exception to Republicans like Jim J Jordan uh, charging that the violence was really coming, really coming from the left and not the right. Here is Congressman Ted Lieu. And when we talk about actual political violence, uh, you know who had their skull hit by a hammer? It was a spouse of the Speaker of the House. Multiple Republicans made fun of that. They circulated conspiracy theories. They said all sorts of things that were not true. Republicans should be ashamed for doing that. So please stop whining about threats to Supreme Court justices when the actual violence of a person being hit in the head with a hammer had to go to surgery was a spouse of the Democratic Speaker of the House. Then Congressman Eric Swalwell asked Jim Jordan to denounce President Trump's call to suspend the Constitution and reinstate him as president. That's a reasonable question to ask of the future chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Yes, well, Mr. Jordan denounced Donald Trump's termination of the Constitution. Uh, Pre President Trump has clarified his comments regarding the Constitution. He put out another post, I think, a day or so later, maybe, maybe the next day, I can't, can't recall. And that was all he had to say. Uh, yes, Donald Trump clarified that he didn't want to suspend the entire Constitution. He basically said just the articles and clauses that would prevent him from being reinstated as president. That is the future chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Jim Jordan. He just can't seem to bring himself to denounce Trump for wanting to suspend the Constitution. And then for some reason, Jordan, right after this, felt obliged to say this. And everyone knows President Trump, there's no way this guy's anti-Semitic. This guy was the most pro-Israel president in history. Why do the Republicans keep saying that? Being a supporter of Israel doesn't mean you like Jews. It means you like Jews who don't live in America. Put the embassy back in Jerusalem, Abraham Accord. I mean, the, the, the most pro-Israel pro president we've ever had did more in foreign policy in the Middle East than any president we've ever had. Mm, yes, the most pro-Israeli president in American history. More pro-Israeli than Harry Truman, who recognized Israel when it first became a nation, more pro-Israel than Johnson and Nixon, who provided Israel with the weapons to defend itself, more pro-Israel than Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton, who negotiated peace for Israel with Egypt, Jordan, and sometimes with Syria and even the Palestinians. You know, the fact is that Donald Trump and the Republicans have cultivated racists, bigots, misogynists, homophobes, and anti-Semites. But don't take my word for it. Here is Richard Spencer. He is the alt-right neo-Nazi leader who organized the United Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville. He was on a show, and they asked him why Donald Trump will not disavow Kanye. What do you think about... Um Trump not disavowing, really, uh, Fuentes this whole time. He can't. I mean, look, he never really disavowed me. He never disavowed the alt-right. He never disavowed Charlottesville. I mean, he doesn't disavow his own people. He might disavow me now because I've been, you know, uh, anti-Trump for five years or whatever it is now, four years. Um, he won't disavow his own people. I mean, that that he does know who butters his bread. And so, yeah, he's not going to do it. He kind of, you know, he said, I don't know who Nick Fuentes is, as MTG said 
you know, shortly after appearing at a Nick Fuentes concert or, or a conference rather kind of like a concert. Um, so, you know, it was a deflection you could say, but I, I just, I don't think he's going to do it. And, and I think if he's forced to do it, it would ultimately be a weakness. I, I think any politician that's any Republican that's denouncing this stuff is going to lose. <laughs> Am I still there? Yeah, you're still there. Okay. It's not showing up on my, any okay, Republican sorry. that denounces uh, yay is going to lose because they're ultimately denouncing their own people. That's right. <laughs> you heard it from the horse's ass's mouth. Richard Spencer. Kanye appeared on Gavin McGinnis's show. Gavin McGinnis is the founder of the Proud Boys. And McGinnis asked Kanye this week about his presidential campaign, his aspirations. And he was concerned that he didn't think Kanye was electable because he's so pro-Hitler. Well, that's going to be a tough thing to institute. So, so you're president of the United States. The, the Hitler thing does not hurt your campaign. First day I, It helps my campaign. It helps my campaign. Then Kanye explained that America must be a Christian nation. The main issue is that Christ is king. Christ is the true king of Israel. Christ is the king of all kings. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you are wrong. And anyone that doesn't believe in Jesus Christ should not be in control or in any influence to anything that America produces, be it media, technology, politics, farming, medicine, prisons. If you do not believe in Christ and you're not following Christ in the decisions that you make, you should have no influence on that. Now, in a couple of months, Kanye will rehabilitate his image. He'll say he was having a, a psychiatric episode, a psychotic episode. However, let's listen to what a person says when they're having a psychotic episode. The main issue is that Christ is king. Christ is the true king of Israel. Christ is the king of all kings. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you are wrong. And anyone that doesn't believe in Jesus Christ should not be in control or in any influence to anything that America produces, be it media, technology, politics, farming, medicine, prisons. If you do not believe in Christ and you're not following Christ in the decisions that you make, you should have no influence on that. That would be somebody who is having a psychotic episode. And that's what he says. Something to keep in mind, Carrie Lake ran for governor of Arizona, and she lost. She was on some religious talk show yesterday, and she had advice for herself and her supporters. People can, for starters, pray. We, we really need God in, in this world. We need God in our hearts, in our homes, and in our country. Thank you, Kanye. I mean, Carrie Lake. And then she added. And I know God's making a big comeback in this country. Yes, God is making a big comeback. It's kind of like the reconnaissance, only bigger. Then she talked about Jesus as the father she never had. And then I think about what God, you know, our father is doing. He's imagine if you if your dad said to you, I have such great hope for you. And I, I believe in you so much that I'm going to put you in charge of something difficult. And that's what he's saying to us. He's saying, I've put you all here for these difficult times because I have such faith in you. I know how strong you are. Okay. All this because her father hated her. We all have to go through this because her father was smart enough to recognize early on that Carrie Lake is a detestable human being and he hated her. And now we all have to listen to this nonsense. But there are good people. Yes, there are. There are people who do the right thing. They admit defeat. Jim Jordan cannot admit defeat. Never. Can't admit he's wrong. Donald Trump can't admit he's wrong. Carrie Lake can't admit there's something I don't know, psychotic about these people. But Tuesday night, Herschel Walker lost. He lost the Senate runoff in Georgia to Senator Raphael Warnock. And 
here is Herschel Walker. He's doing the strangest thing. But one of the things I said is they, when they called the race, I said the numbers doesn't look like they're going to add up. But one of the things I want to tell all of you is you never stop dreaming. I don't want any of you to stop dreaming. I don't want any of you to stop believing in America. That would be a concession. He, unlike Carrie Lake or Donald Trump or Jim Jordan or all the other people who support Donald Trump, uh, Herschel Walker conceded. Strangest thing. He added, I want you to believe in America and continue to believe in the Constitution and believe in our elected officials most of all. Okay, I have to say, I thought, I don't follow football. So I thought Herschel Walker was a clown. And I have so much respect for him because that, that race in Georgia was a game. And he was in way over his head, as I would have been. He got talked into it. Uh, but this is a man who uh, I have tremendous respect for. I want you to believe in America and continue to believe in the Constitution and believe in our elected officials most of all. In Georgia, l listen to this again. He's saying this in Georgia, where Donald Trump, for a grand jury, is hearing testimony on how Donald Trump tried to fix the presidential election in Georgia, where Lindsey Graham has to testify, where Rudy Giuliani has to testify before this grand jury because they would not accept the results in Georgia. Here is Donald Trump's hand-picked candidate in Georgia, not only conceding, but saying this. I want you to believe in America and continue to believe in the Constitution and believe in our elected officials most of all. Believe in our Constitution and elected officials. I have tremendous respect for him. Tremendous. Tuesday night, though, rough for conservatives. Here is Fox News' racist Laura Ingram. I I'm pissed tonight, frankly. Go ahead. Yeah, it's really offensive. I'm mad. She's mad that he conceded. She's pissed that he's lost. Marjorie Taylor Greene is a congresswoman from Georgia, and she thinks the Republican leadership completely blew it. This is for Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham and the rest of the Republican senators. You guys are the reasons why we are losing Republican races all over the country. And this is your third loss in my home state. So let me inform you on behalf of Georgia, this is your third strike and you're out. You don't belong in our state running key races anymore. No, thank you. We don't want your help. Let me let you know something, Steve. I was never asked very often by the Herschel Walker campaign to come speak at any of his campaign events. They only asked me to come to maybe two, I think, two or three. Maybe because he loves America. So there's a bit of a civil war, at least in the House. Andy Biggs is going to challenge Kevin McCarthy for uh, the speakership. The, the people who are really devoted to Trump. Uh, Kevin McCarthy may not make it as speaker. Uh, the Senate is a little different from the House. Uh, Donald Trump does not speak highly of Mitch McConnell. Here is Senate Minority Leader Republican Mitch McConnell being asked this week about Trump wanting to shred the Constitution. Donald Trump, can you say categorically that you would not support him if you were the Republican nominee? What I'm saying is it would be pretty hard to be sworn in to the presidency if you're not willing to uphold the Constitution. That's what I said, and uh, I just said it again. Sounds like at least Republicans in the Senate want to be done with Trump. Elections do have consequences. For the past two years, we've heard nothing but voter fraud coming out of Fox News. But suddenly, Sean Hannity has had a change of heart when it comes to mail-in ballots. Uh, I think Republicans have been unwilling, for whatever reason, reluctant, resistant, to voting early and voting by mail. Yes, I wonder why. Oh, that's because you and Donald Trump told them not to. But suddenly, after 
the Republicans didn't do too well in the midterms and they didn't get the Senate, you're all of a sudden in favor of mail-in ballots? All of a sudden you try, oh, I know what happened. The nearly $2 billion lawsuit filed by Dominion Voting Machines against Fox News, against you. All of a sudden, with a $2 billion lawsuit heating up against Fox News for spreading the lies that the election was rigged, all of a sudden, we see these personalities with newfound faith in our electoral system. Here are Kellyanne Conway and Laura Ingram on Tuesday night. Suddenly, they have no problem with mail-in ballots. If we don't bank ballots early, we're going to keep Mark, losing. But we didn't. This is not, but we didn't. But we this, didn't do it in 2020 because everyone said don't vote early because that's corrupt. Not so, everyone. Well, yes, uh, well big, a lot of people did people at did. the very top of the Republican Party. <laughs> yes, you didn't. people did. And we're being sued for $2 billion because of that. Could it be that maybe the GOP has also gone too far taking away women's reproductive rights? Here's Sean Hannity. Not to pick on Pennsylvania gubernatorial candidate Doug Mastriano, but you look at his position on abortion. He had no exceptions for rape, incest, the mother's life. You, in Pennsylvania, I'm talking politically, not morally here, you cannot win Pennsylvania with that position. It is simply mathematically impossible, a bad candidate for that race, and it had impact on the entire Republican ticket. Hmm. So I guess uh, abortion is uh, not a being against abortion not a winning not a winning platform. The Republicans once again are performing a postmortem. Uh, they didn't win back the Senate. They barely have the House, although they did win the popular vote by about five million. But they didn't get the red wave they were planning on. Here is Senator Rick Scott, very corrupt man, right? Defrauded our government. I think like a billion dollars in, in Medicare fraud. And so then he became a, a senator from Florida. Uh, here is Senator Rick Scott. He was in charge of winning the Senate for the Republicans. And he went through a couple hundred million dollars, just completely blew through it, complete failure. Here he is uh, talking about the problem that Republicans have uh, winning elections. I think we, ought, we do have to have a message that when, when Republicans run, you say, you're, this is what Republicans are going to get done. Every state race, every race is going to be a little bit different, but we've got to have an agenda. Yeah, you don't have an agenda other than destroying everything you touch. Here is Indiana Senator Mike Braun, Republican. We are basically for nothing and we complain about it along the way, and then say, well, maybe we'll tell you after we're uh, elected. It's not going to work. Uh, what? L let's hear that uh, one more time, Senator Mike Braun, Indiana Republican. Why did you lose? We are basically for nothing, and we complain about it along the way, and then say, well, maybe we'll tell you after we're uh, elected. It's not going to work. Yeah, they're basically for nothing other than destroying our country, other than destroying our country so their rich benefactors don't have to pay taxes. They're for nothing. I think that says it all. They're for nothing, and they won't admit defeat. You know, Americans vote for people who are willing to say they lost. Uh, we don't like Trump, Carrie Lake, or Jim Jordan, uh, we don't trust anyone who can't imagine that they're ever wrong. Believe it or not, if the Republicans want to start winning again, they might want to stick with candidates who are willing to say this, even though they're losers. I want you to believe in America and continue to believe in the Constitution and believe in our elected officials most of all. Hmm. I have a lot of respect now for Herschel Walker. I, I, I didn't follow football. I didn't know how great he was. Uh, it turns out he's a lot smarter uh, than he let on. And more importantly, unlike all the Republicans he was surrounded by in this election, he actually loves this country. The Republicans might want to give that a try. They may win elections. 
loving this country. They don't. I'm David Feldman. If you liked today's episode, please subscribe to this channel and hit the like button and recommend it to your friends. Office hours this Friday night, starting at 8, I'm there for the first 90 minutes, and then the community takes over. Please go to my website for the link or subscribe to my newsletter. The office hour link comes with the, the newsletter. I'm David Feldman reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak.